and welcome to the Cloaked Hedgehogs YouTube channel. Today we're going to hear about four dogman encounters in the state of Illinois. This story was told at IllinoisWerewolf.blogspot.com. It was October 1st and I was coming home from a visit to the forest preserve. It was extremely foggy and misty that day, and as I turned off the main street and into my subdivision, I glanced into the rearview mirror and saw something I will not soon forget. Something was standing upright in the middle of the street, and it wasn't human. My first thought was a large dog, but it couldn't be. As I slowed down and came to a stop, I observed the creature. It appeared to be six plus feet in height, covered in brownish gray fur, and a head that resembled a German shepherd, but larger. It had elongated fingers and toes with claws on both. I continued to watch the creature as it dropped to all fours and ran off into a field and disappeared. I was in utter shock after what I had witnessed as my house was just a block away. When I entered my driveway I sat and looked towards the wooded dead-end path which was the direction it was heading when I last saw it. I got out of my car quickly, entered my house and locked all the doors and closed the curtains. I continued to watch out the window towards the dead end, trying to catch a glimpse of the creature once more, but I have never seen anything like it since, and I have never shared this with anyone before. It was amazing and frightening all at the same time. The strangest part of this story is when you look at the Google Earth images of the spot where the sighting took place. There's this strange thing in the road, something that seems to be about five feet long and on all fours if it's an animal. What that might be, I don't know. Could be something else, could be a deer, could be a dogman. This encounter comes from Cryptomundo.com. In August of 1983, Nancy Bankston lived on the outskirts of Decatur, Illinois. The newly built up addition of single family homes is located northwest of the city limits and about three quarters of a mile past the Macon County fairgrounds. This area in 83 was still considered remote by many. Farmland, corn and soybean fields, patches of wood and unpaved country roads was the lay of the land. Even the modern homes were still without city services in those days. Nevertheless, it was a great place to bring up children and get away from a town that was on a downward spin. Nancy never took an overzealous interest in the wilds of the area, save for the deer population. That was, and remains, her true nature's thrill. To see a wild deer along the road or notice a fawn in the bush still excites her. Some even know her only as the deer lady. She often took evening rides for the sole purpose of deer watching. It calmed her, she said. Her ability to spot a deer is uncanny. Whether she's driving or not, on the phone or singing to the radio, in an instant she'll see them. This is a woman that can easily spot deer constantly from hundred yards off even at times, in thick brush. It's amazing. But one morning in mid-August 1983, things would change. She had decided the evening before that she'd get up, feed and bathe her four-month-old baby boy, then go into town to run some errands and maybe even do some window shopping exercise. Since it was going to be another beautiful warm day, she planned on starting out early. The next morning came quickly. Her day had begun at 6.30 a.m. The warmth and rays of the sunrise now came in her kitchen window and the rich, clear blue sky put a skip in her step. The baby was in a wonderfully content mood and soon bathed and fed too. Now it was almost 8.15. The neighborhood was quiet. Most all had left for work an hour or so earlier. A few more chores around the house and out the door they went. It was now 9.30 a.m. Her house was on a dead-end road. The road surface was oil and gravel in those days. 
It was approximately two miles until she turned onto the paved highway 121 into town. The heat of the day had not hit yet, so she put down all the car windows two inches or so on her 1981 Red Ford Tempo. The baby was safely strapped in the back seat and the radio was tuned in to her favorite station. But nothing good was on, so she shut it off. She pulled out of the driveway onto Needle Road, already looking to the west field for deer and the condition of the corn. Then south she went for about 300 yards and left turn onto Ash Avenue for approximately one half mile, turning south onto North West Lawn. Traveling south now, she was going extremely slow, no more than 25 miles an hour. Tall corn bordered both sides of the road. As she drove, she watched for deer and thought, well, in about another month the corn will be harvested. Now, before we go any further, let us learn a bit more about our witness, Nancy, and try to consider the reasons for her silence until now. Her family owned three standard stations in Decatur, Illinois. In high school, she was in the library club, the French club, office occupations, and on the yearbook staff. Her college years were spent at Richland Community College. Her employment found her as a dispatcher for the Macon County Sheriff's Office, a patient care tech for an OBGYN doctor, and a teaching assistant for Decatur Public Schools District 61, which she ultimately retired from. She was an active volunteer for the less fortunate through her church and school, and in the midst of these jobs, deeds, and education, she raised two children, a boy and a girl, plus cared for the elder folks of the family. So as Nancy's tooling south on Northwest Lawn at the breakneck speed of 25 miles per hour, thinking of the seven foot tall golden corn being harvested and hoping to see a deer scampering off, a beast appears. Yes, an unrecognizable animal. The creature had appeared some 60 yards in front of me. It had emerged from the cornfield to the left, east of me, on all fours. I tapped the brakes. From the offset I knew it was not a deer, not a dog or a coyote. I had started coasting, not knowing which way the thing was going to go. As I coasted, getting closer by the second, I could see it had stopped and started looking north, then south, then north again. It started taking small steps, like in a slow motion movement, as if it were contemplating whether to continue or retreat to the field. However, it did not seem alarmed or in a hurry. Two small steps were taken, then it sniffed the ground or was listening or something. She continued, it kept sniffing all the way to the road's edge, some ten feet, turning its head continuously north to south, north to south. Now it was 30 or 40 feet from it. I kept tapping my brakes. At this point, it was at the gravel road's edge and stopped sniffing. Then the head turned again as if looking for traffic. It lifted its head and stepped upon the road. My vehicle is now at a crawl. At approximately one half way across the road, it slowly began to rise. I'd never seen anything like this. By the time it got to the other side, it was standing erect on two legs, walking. It moved at a snail's pace, again turning its head from side to side. I'm now less than 20 feet away, approaching the west side of the cornfield. Its left appendage reached out and pulled back the corn, as if opening a curtain. As it went into the corn, I was all but even with it. Then it immediately disappeared into the field. The vehicle was at a dead stop. I even backed up, then pulled forward, but I could not see it. Straggly long hair hanging two inches off its upper arms. Back hair was thick looking, as if it was in need of a really good brushing. Its tail was about a foot long, straight and bushy. Ears were located on the side of its head and the size of a human, teardrop-shaped, with hair hanging off them. The corn was seven feet tall, and this critter was at least six feet tall. It was so thin, like undernourished. 
The hair color was reddish brown, possibly due to the sunshine. It was bright that day. My only memory of the eyes is dark. The muzzle was like a wolf. It never opened its mouth. Long hair was also hanging off its paws or whatever they were. I didn't get a look at the feet. It never made a sound and I didn't smell anything strange. It never really looked at me, more like it was looking through me or past me. I honestly was never nervous. There were no other sightings reported. The baby in the back seat never woke up. The entire visual sighting lasted between two and three minutes. After the creature disappeared into the corn, the witness drove back and forth for roughly five minutes, searching and saw nothing. For years after the event, she would often slow down her vehicle to a crawl, hoping to see it again, but she never did. There was no traffic previous to, during or five minutes subsequent to the sighting. Nancy had occasional dreams of the event for decades. At the time of the event, no other area sightings were reported. No past area myths, tales or related type creatures were known to Nancy. This was and remains a unique experience to her. This encounter comes from the Unexplained Mysteries Forum. I was talking to one of my really good friends today, and we just somehow ended up talking about weird stuff we've seen in our life. He brings up the story of how one of our friends and her friends had a scary encounter. They were walking through a neighborhood at night and just ended up at a park outside a forest preserve, which is a very big forest. So they're walking towards the park when they see what they thought was a tall person on top of a swing set. They stop and are wondering who would be standing on a swing set at 10 p.m. at night alone. So they get closer and the creature turns around. Looking at them was a hairy creature with bright orange eyes, standing straight at around 8 feet tall. It looked at them for about 5 seconds, then it jumped straight down, sprinting away with no sound. They got scared and ran back to their car and went home. As soon as one of them got home, she was sitting inside when banging started on her house. She called up one of her friends, supposing it was him, telling him to stop. He told her it really wasn't him. He said he was home and the same thing was happening with him. They never saw the creature again. There has been a few more sightings by people who say they'll wake up early in the morning around 6 a.m. and will see the creature watching them when they're outside. Everyone who describes it describes it as a werewolf-type creature. Me and a couple of my friends went to the same forest preserve at night to a different area with picnic benches, just to hang out and have a couple of beers. We'd heard about our friend's story a couple of times, but thought they were just pulling our chain. We were there for about an hour. By then we'd finished our beers and decided to leave. At this point, my friend goes to relieve himself near the edge of the woods. We said we'll wait for him. He finishes up and walks back to us as we're just walking back to my car in normal conversation. But he's not talking. We just ask him, why are you so quiet? He told us to hurry up and move fast to the car. I said, what's going on? So we get to our car and he seems to be fine and all is forgotten. I've seen him every day since then and everything is normal. But then the other day, we were sitting in the steak and shake, eating, and I bring up the park. I told him we should all go do that again, and then he flat out told me. He told me when he was doing his business, on the edge of the woods, he saw two glowing orange eyes looking at him from about 20 feet away, getting closer. He didn't see the creature due to the fact that it was almost pitch black, but he saw the eyes getting closer and he got scared. He told me he didn't tell us that night because he didn't want to scare us and he thought we wouldn't believe him. Now I can't get this off my mind and I'm just wondering if anyone has seen a similar type creature. Sightings took place in Naperville, Bolingbrook, Illinois. 
This encounter was told on Coast to Coast Radio, and it was transcribed by Jamie Bryan and posted at phantomsandmonsters.com. I just turned 60 here last November. When I was 14 or 15, me and a buddy went hunting up on the Burlington Northern Track, between the town of Dayton and Weedron. We had just got a heavy snow, about 10 to 12 inches. We made it all the way up to where the Weedron silica pits were, and we turned and went across the tracks, came back the other side, and we were pretty well gassed out because it was a long walk in the deep snow. We got about half a mile from the state cemetery, and we weren't talking. We were pretty well winded. Anyway... I heard something growling and snarling, and Jimmy walked up behind me, and we were both looking. There was a big canine creature, and there was a four or five strand barbed wire fence, and it was on the other side along the timber line. There was a big orange moon coming up on the east side of the river, but the river runs north and south. It came up to the edge of the fence. I had a 20 gauge single shot and I think Jimmy had a 12 gauge single shot. I had mine cocked and I imagine he had his cocked too. It stood up and there was about 4 or 5 feet of it over the top of the fence. It was huge. It was terrifying. It had red eyes. It was just as red as it could be. And it wasn't from the moonlight, because the moon was still on the east side of the river, coming up. We took off, and we'd usually cut down to the east side of the cemetery, and go down through the woods back to the Burlington Northern Track. But we were too scared to go that way, so we went around the cemetery on the west side, and went all the way to his house. His dad and his buddies were down in the basement where they were playing cards. We ran down there and told them what had happened to us, and they didn't believe us at all. But it was terrifying. That was all for today, but remember to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, and take care and be safe, and I'll see you next time.